Hello and welcome to Business 24. Ever heard of the text illicit financial flows? Well, I'm sure you have, but there seems to be a new dimension to this financial crime. Now, according to a World Bank report published in July 2017, money illegally earned, transferred or used that crosses borders is the most common definition of illicit financial flows, IFFs. The term emerged in the 1990s and was initially associated with capital flight. It now generally refers to cross-border movements of capital associated with illegal activities. Now, as an effect, IFFs reduce domestic resources and tax revenues needed to fund poverty-reducing programs and infrastructure in developing countries. Accordingly, they are receiving growing attention as a key development challenge. A December 2015 report from Global Financial Integrity, illicit financial flows from the developing countries 2004 to 2013 finds that developing and emerging economies lost $7.8 trillion in illicit financial flows from 2004 through 2013, with illicit financial flows increasing at an average rate of 6.5% per year, nearly twice as fast as global GDP. Need I tell you that Nigeria is not excluded from this loss? Well, your guess is as good as mine. According to the Executive Secretary of Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, PACAC, Professor Bolaji Owosoye, Africa and indeed Nigeria loses more from illicit financial flows IFF perpetrated by multinational corporations than from direct looting by politically exposed persons. Now, with 70% of West Africa's losses to IFFs coming from Nigeria, stakeholders who believe no government should fold its hands and continue to watch foreign entities devour its economy are taking the bulls by the horn. Measures put in place to check this corrupt practice and the results achieved forms a large chunk of our discourse on this new episode of your weekly magazine program, Business 24. Also on our lineup are the regulars, Moving Nigeria Beyond Oil, a review of the capital market, export tips from our in-house expert, and of course, our entrepreneur for the week who is into furniture and interior decoration. Starting off a seeming lucrative business at a young age, they say it's not always easy. But if we persevere, the gains are worth the pain. You'll get to find out what I mean if you stay tuned. I'm Chimobi Walter Naji. Thanks for staying with us. The federal government over time has been putting modalities in place to fight the trend of illicit financial flows in the country. Now, these efforts have yielded lots of positive results, but still leaves more to be desired. With current estimated loss by Africa through illicit financial flows put at over $80 billion annually, Nigeria accounts for a higher percentage of the amount and this is despite efforts by Nigeria through the IMF and other agencies to repatriate all funds illegally moved out of the country into some foreign accounts in our other countries. Now, I looked into these issues and here are my findings. Africa's retail banking revenue has been estimated to grow to $53 billion by 2022. The figure represents 41% of the total banking revenue in the region in the next four years. According to the 2018 African Banking Report recently released by McKinsey, the expected growth in revenue will come from South Africa, Egypt, Nigeria, Morocco, Ghana and Kenya. Similarly, the International Monetary Fund IMF also projected the economies of Nigeria and other sub-Saharan countries to grow by an average of 3.4% in 2018 from 2.8% in 2017. With all these projections, one major setback is the volume of money lost to other countries through illicit means, despite modalities put in place by financial institutions to put a stop to this trend. 
President Muhammad Buhari's anti-corruption drive moved a notch higher as Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates, as well as other countries, signed an agreement on the recovery of assets and cash stashed away in other countries by Nigerians. For Alexander Ezenago, an international tax researcher, the issue of illicit financial flows differ from country to country, but for Nigeria, the issue of more legislation would go a long way in stalling the gains of illicit financial flows and further strengthening financial institutions in tracing the illegal movement of money within and outside the country. Because illicit financial flows have its criminal component, which you would find under our criminal laws, but also it has its tax component, which you find under the tax regulations. Um, however, there's, there's, there's this argument as to if tax avoidance should constitute illicit financial flows, and that might be where we don't necessarily have laws on ground to penalize people who are engaged in tax avoidance. But I think that um, the, the attitude is changing, and I think tax avoidance might be penalized in the near future as, um, as a criminal activity. Part of it, of course, is corruption. And uh, another thing is that weak legislation. Most of our laws are outdated to combat the current amplings in the financial business. Another thing, again, is the fact that um, we have within the system people who just make themselves available for corrupt practices. We have weak legislations, we have corrupt practices, and we have weak mark power as well, too. Sometimes when we are negotiating treaties, our people are not skilled enough to be able to negotiate with these multinationals so that they can get the best deal out of them. And so we keep having countries negotiating with us, doing business here, and shifting the property to other regions where these monies are utilized for their own benefit. With the world fast becoming a global village, it has become very easy to move funds from one place to another just by the push of a button. What is the role of the African Development Bank in checkmating the issues of funds diversion in West and Central African countries? These experts prefer solutions. Well, the first thing is that um, you have to have institutions, domestic institutions, that are staffed with very knowledgeable, competent hands that can help trace, and if you want to use the work of uh, the high-level panel, track the funds that have been stocked out of the country. And that will enable you to know the destination country where these resources are packed, or these assets, the illegally acquired asset. And it is only then you can follow the process of recovery. So the process has to start first and foremost within your own domestic jurisdiction before you go to other foreign jurisdictions. Issue in terms of uh, losing funds, uh, tax evasion, with most of uh, we are a cash-based economy, and most of our people are doing um, these small enterprises where they are not contributing to the tax uh, of the whole nation. So it is important from this conference that will gain other measures we can put in place as a country. The effort is increasing all the time. The awareness, the public awareness, and, and, and frankly, the attitude towards it. You know, two decades ago, people may well have said, you know, they're a, pol they're a corrupt politician. It's their turn to take the money. It's, it's acceptable. Now young people are seeing the harm it causes their country, are seeing the... Um, the damage it causes in respect of uh, economic growth and also uh, stability and um, the, the, the fact that funds can be diverted and might not go and support the police or the military and, and so on. It's, they're saying enough is enough. It is widely believed that governments and non-governmental agencies, civil society groups and indeed the entire populace of Nigeria supports the current drive against corruption in order to deepen the nation's external reserve, thereby providing employment opportunities for the country. In Abuja, Chimobu Walter Naji for Business 24.
And in a related development, the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs of the present administration basically focuses on reducing illicit financial and arms flows significantly, strengthening the recovery and return of stolen assets and combat all forms of organized crime. Now, in keeping with the Sustainable Goal agenda, the present administration has been taking steps to stem all forms of corruption. Comfort Amodu tells us that key players in, the rega in that regard converged on Abuja for the International Conference on Promoting International Cooperation in Combating Illicit Financial Flows in Africa, a course that is geared towards enhancing assets recovery. Regardless of the ratification of relevant international agreement and domestic legal framework in place, Nigeria still loses over $50 billion to illegal financial flows annually. These include investment, remittances, debt pardon and natural resources exports, aside the damaging impact it has on the overall economic capital outflows, illicit financial flows have a dreadful impact on governments, victims of the crime and the society. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, penalized four banks with a total fine of 5.8 billion naira for allegedly assisting a multinational telecommunication company illegally repatriate $8.13 billion recently. Because of the political uh, will of the administration, the regulatory agencies like the CBN uh, have started to act. Going by the rule of law, uh, the, the, the company has been fined. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, they have the resource to go to court and challenge uh, the, the ruling. This is the present administration's effort to rid the country of all kinds of illicit financial flows both by multinational corporate organizations and politically exposed persons. In view of this, the second international conference on combating illicit financial flows and enhancing assets recovery for sustainable development was held in Abuja under the umbrella of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, Nigeria. The conference focused on instituting policies that would detect and dissuade cross-border financial flows, tax evasion, strengthen anti-money laundering laws and practices as well as improve transparency of multinational corporations to contribute to the realization and implementation of the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development by assisting vulnerable countries, enhance mobilization of domestic resources. Resources lost to illicit financial flows could otherwise have been used to drive Africa's development. Lost tax revenues and private investment could have helped to avoid austerity, provide jobs and infrastructure, and pay for vital social services, including education and health. We would like to see good, honest companies, multinationals, to come to this continent, invest with us, work together with us to develop our continent, but pay their dues and pay their taxes. People smuggle diamonds or drugs or even ivory through poached uh, processes because there is so much informal trade and illicit trade on the continent as well. But the issue of illicit financial flows was raised first on the African continent. It has already identified as an African issue and we need to keep control of it and we need to push the agenda much faster and much harder than it is going right now. On the efforts so far made by Nigeria to curtail illicit financial flows, government officials says Nigeria has introduced a single window straight platforms at the country's ports of entry for companies registration as well as introduced the voluntary assets and income declaration scheme fades to give a window of amnesty to tax evaders and other financial crimes we've just uh, updated new transfer pricing regulations for nigeria and we're working hand in hand with other organizations and other countries to make sure that we cover and ensure that all tax that are due to nigeria are paid within Nigeria. We are taking um, other me legal measures, which include substitution, which means that we're putting a freeze on the bank accounts to ensure that they get a tax ID and pay any outstanding taxes. 
Mr. President is determined that uh, we should get uh, everything back. But at the same time, you know, things like with the whistleblower policies and um, other very important initiatives taken, uh, we're seeing results and, um, you know, showing that the government is moving in the right direction. In view of Nigerians' fight against corruption, President Mahmoud Buhari was elected African Union Anti-Corruption Champion 2018. For Business 24, I'm Comfort Amadou. All right, thank you, Comfort. It's elating to know we are making a headway in the, that regard. However, subsequent statistics as to the amount lost to IFFs will assess the impact better. Let's keep our fingers crossed and be optimistic. To our complementary segments, small businesses and the private sector are major contributors to Nigeria's GDP, with young Nigerians taking advantage of its potentials to showcase their creative and business acumen. Our entrepreneur for the week has no doubt blended in, and she shared her story with Business 24. It is common knowledge that starting any business in Nigeria is a tricky endeavor. This is because of the many hurdles associated with it, ranging from registering with the Corporate Affairs Commission to obtaining the relevant licenses. However, perseverance, they say, is the mother of all invention. And this is the story of Ms. Bomo Samsele, whose 10-year journey into being an entrepreneur was driven not only by passion, but also by perseverance. Um, we started this business from our garage in Lagos, in Apapa, in 2006. Then I was still in school, and she was just bringing in flowers and um, little furniture. And then when I finished school, obviously, I wasn't going to work for anybody. And then we looked for what to do. First, we started selling clothes. That obviously did not work out. So we went back to our first love which is furniture retail, and um, it has grown to this. Combining her love for furniture and her flair for design, Boma has navigated the rough business terrain in Nigeria, growing the business from her family garage to renting a big store in Abuja. It hasn't been an easy one, obviously, with um, high exchange rates, fluctuating ex exchange rates, um well i would say the most important thing in our business is the consumers having a high disposable income will profit us but where the economy is not thriving they don't have their disposable um, disposable income so they are not able to um buy luxury goods like what we offer so it's 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 um it's taxing you have to bring in what, you know, what your um, customers like at a certain moment. By the grace of God, we are doing well. I will not complain. For most young Nigerians, starting up a business is a Herculean task that should not be ventured into lightly. However, with all the difficulties she has experienced, the business is still thriving and Bomo has this advice to share. For furniture business, I would say start small. Start with them. Um, know your target market. Know your have a flair first. Have an understanding of the business before you really go into it. Because it's dicey. It's easy to fail. You can buy something and nobody would appreciate it. So I would say start small. According to Boma, knowing your market is certainly key for small startups. In Abuja, I'm Rana Miyagirani. All right, thank you, Rana Mi. On our export teams for today, our in-house export expert, Femi Boyede, speaks on the benefits of the recent bilateral ties between Nigeria and other countries in strengthening our export capabilities, especially as regards Nigeria's position 
on the African continental free trade area. Export Digest, as much as it is educative, would also like to lend a voice to trending issues. And this time around, we're talking about uh, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement and possibly, if we have the time, the I don't know whether it is completely abandoned now or still in the making economic partnership agreement with the, um, Europe. It's important for us to talk about agreements because at the end of the day, what we are doing is seeking to export and you do not export to yourself. MSMEs who have found it difficult so far to actually break into the markets of Europe and America are actually going to have at their fingertips a ready market that is here. That's the uh, uh, attraction. That's the reason why for Nigeria's export, it is desirable that Nigeria becomes a, 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 a signatory to a participating member, now a trader in the big African market. So that will be our position on the CFTA to advise gently, gently, but please let the negotiations, uh, the discussions, the studies, let them be speeded up in such a way as to allow Nigeria to take the expected, um, I wanted not to use that word, but reasonable position of actually endorsing, signing and ratifying the, uh, uh, our membership of the CFT8. Thank you, Mr. Bayade. And just before we go, here is a quick review of the capital market performance for the week ended 14th September 2018. Bearish sentiments continue to dominate Nigeria's equities market, but not to worry. As the saying goes, there is always a light at the end of every tunnel, especially if we stay optimistic. Our capital market reviewer for this week has more on that. The capital market was uh, bearish almost throughout this uh, week. The ocean index came down four out of five trading days, but it was worst on Wednesday, 12th of uh, September, because the market lost 3.4% as a result of a loss in uh, two highly capitalized stocks, that is Dangote Cement and uh, Nestle. But uh, the following day, we found out that the market lost just about 0.84%, and today it's gained 0.95%. So the loss today for this week is about 5.17%. So, and uh, I believe the trend is reversing itself. And um, I believe there's no uh, reason for investors to engage in panic selling because uh, all the macroeconomic variables are still positive. The company results are very positive. Some of the company declared a uh, dividend recently. And uh, if you look at uh, the macroeconomic variables like uh, inflation, they just went marginally up. This, uh, the latest report just by 11.23%. The oil prices have been very stable, so there's no need to engage in panic selling because even the political uncertainty and insecurity is for a short while. And the majority of the people feel that by November, when all the primaries are conducted, people will now see the direction that the 2019 election will go. And then also the PFAs uh, in their multi-fund uh, uh, system I think they were given about two, about six months. So we believe that by December, some of them will still come to the market to rebalance their portfolio and to make sure that they meet the PENCOM target for equity 
and yeah, there's an apple for you. Hmm, this is where we draw the curtain on this week's edition of your weekly magazine program, Business 24. We do hope you enjoyed every bit of it. Please do remember, we value your input to help us serve you even better. So, keep the mills coming. This is Business 24. Many thanks for your time and we still come your way again, same time, same station, next week. I'm Chimobi Walter Naji. Bye for now.